What's up all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my advanced look at the Wolverine Weapon X Gallery Edition from Marvel Comics. So let's get this started. Before getting started, I want to give a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this gallery edition. This gallery edition is due out in the direct market and book market on April 12th. It was originally supposed to come out at the end of this month, as a matter of fact, this week, but there were some delays. But it is coming out. Obviously, this it is real. Uh, but here we have the latest gallery edition. I love these books. They're oversized books. To kind of give you an idea of how big they are, here it is compared to the size of a Marvel Omnibus. And of course, Marvel and DC Omnis are the same size as the height. There we go. Get a better idea of how much taller it is than a Marvel Omnibus. And as I mentioned, this is just the latest of the gallery editions. We've had them come out in the last couple of years. And here's what the spines will look like on your shelf. And then Marvel also releases these treasury editions. However, the treasury editions are soft cover, like this History of the Marvel Universe, while the gallery editions are hardcover. Well, let's take a closer look at this wonderful book. You have Weapon X right there, Wolverine, of course. I'm going to be talking about that story here in a little bit when I get the book open. Uh, the image of Wolverine at the bottom with the Weapon X helmet. And this classic image of Wolverine just out in the wild. And the book retails for $44.99. Now, let's get this open, talk about the content, show off this beautiful artwork, uh, where it all fits in and the Wolverine history. All right, let's get this masterpiece open. You have an image of Wolverine right here from the final issue of Marvel Comics Presents featuring Weapon X another image of Wolvie. All of this drawn by Barry Windsor Smith. Some of the colors are provided by Barry Windsor Smith. As a matter of fact, here are the credits. So you have story art, color, lettering, all of it Barry Windsor Smith for Weapon X, story art and color on Kenny X-Men 205, and then just supplying the artwork for Wolverine 166. Here are all the other credits like Chris Claremont, Frank Thierry, and Raymond Lee for the colors, lettering Jim Novak. So, here are the contents. Here's your table of contents right here. You have the prologue and then all 12 chapters, including the interlude and escape. Then you have the epilogue, uh, which is by Larry Hama. And you also have the story from Wolverine 166 and Uncanny X-Men 205, The Wounded Wolf, which is one of the all-time best X-Men stories. So what, what, what exactly is the Weapon X project? And... When does it take place? Because that's always been a huge mystery to a lot of uh, us readers of Wolverine. So as you can see from the table of contents, this all took place during Marvel Comics Presents 72 to 84. So in 1991. But that's not when this story takes place. Not in the chronological order of Wolverine's life. This answers the question of how long Wolverine has been alive, maybe... When did the adamantium process begin to be attached to his bones? Because we knew that he had the strongest metal bonded to his bones. But how long ago was that? Because he never really talked about his past. And then we learn later on through, of course, Chris Claremont's run on Uncanny X-Men and Larry Hammond's run that he doesn't have memories of that era. He doesn't have these memories like most of us do. He just remembers from time to time triggered by something going on in his current present life something will trigger a memory and he's going to be like oh my gosh was that real now there are interesting things about this particular book but just look at this gorgeous artwork uh one thing i immediately noticed was this type of paper that they're using it's not quite matte it's not quite glossy paper it doesn't have that glossy finish to it so it makes his colors really pop out i'm going to compare it here to the way that it was printed in the wolverine omnibus volume one and that was something so stunning to me was always the use of colors that barry windsor smith did you know he was a master of art um of course you know with conan and then of course with uncanny x-men the life death and life death two stories uh what was it 188 180 198 198 uh but it wasn't until Uncanny X-Men 205 that I realized, oh my gosh, his colors are amazing. Um, and that's one thing that's 
interesting to take note that Uncanny X-Men 205 came out in like 1986. These stories here came out in 1991. So about a few years later is when we really start talking about his past. And it's something that I think Barry Windsor Smith has always wanted to do with the editors was work on this history of Wolverine, you know, like a science experiment. So that's exactly what happens. Uh, we see Wolverine. Actually, we only see his side of the story in the first and last chapter. He is drinking at a bar. He gets kidnapped. And then we meet a couple of other characters. We meet Carol Hines, who's a newly addition to this project. We'll just call it the Weapon X Project. We meet this gentleman right there. His name is just known as the Professor. And then we get a third character, and that is Cornelius right here. This gentleman on the phone. So Dr. Cornelius, Carol Hines, and the Professor are the three characters that are part of the story. Through their eyes is how the Weapon X Project is told. So, like I mentioned, Wolverine gets kidnapped. And then he's experimented on. They don't say his name. They just call him the subject. And then they're bonding the adamantium into his bones. Now, this all happens before Wolverine 75. Because during this, when you're reading it, you are going to hear some things. Or you're going to read some things, rather, that were retconned later on. Such as the fact that, oh, we use too much adamantium to bond to his bones. So some of it is going to leak out and it's going to create claws through his hands. And that's the idea of where he got his claws. Of course, that was retcon with Wolverine 75 by Larry Hama and Adam Kubert when Wolverine pops out those bone claws. But so there is a little bit of retcon. But this is just a fascinating, I'm going to skip a little bit, part of not just Wolverine's history, but the Marvel history. You're still not sure exactly what year this all took place or how long Wolverine had been alive, but you get the sense that he'd been around for a lot longer than most of the X-Men, just the way he's talking towards the very beginning. But this finally answers the question of how Wolverine got his bones, because, or his adamantium, because for a long time, you know, a lot of us thought, oh, that's just part of his cool mutant power, uh, but no. It was all just a big scientific experiment. Now, of course, the scientific experiment has ties to somebody known as Lady Deathstrike. So Yuriko Oyama was a character that was introduced in Daredevil, and then she became Lady Deathstrike in Alpha Flight when she fought Wolverine. Was that 33 and 34? But she blames Wolverine for having her father stolen adamantium. That's pretty much her whole vengeance story. She wants the adamantium that were stolen from her father and return to her. So that story plays out a little bit later here, but let's just fast forward here. So there's a lot of things going on. They're testing the subjects. They put him, uh, you know, to fight a bear. So, oh yes, that, that's something I will add here. If you're a fan or an animal lover, you can't stand the thought of animals being hurt. Maybe this story is not for you because there are a lot of animals that are hurt here, including Wolverine, the subject. But they put him on trials with a bunch of just soldiers. And later on, of course, we all know, probably, I'm sure, that he escapes this. He doesn't stay here. And man, it is just all-out brutality when he escapes. Gotta showcase this piece of art right there because that helmet just made famous because of this particular story. Yes, but when he escapes, oh man... It is all out war. Now, there was a follow-up to this, but it didn't have anything to do with Barry Windsor Smith, so that's why it's not collected in here. It happened in the pages of Wolverine 48, 49, and 50. It's called the Shiva scenario, Return to Weapon X. Now, since then, the Weapon X project has been retconned. I've always hated that by Grant Morrison, in spite of what they did on New X-Men, like bringing me back to comics. I hated the Weapon Plus idea absolutely hated weapon 10 like oh that made no sense but anyway to me it will always be weapon x now let's showcase oh these are some of my favorite pages i would love to own the original art for these two pages they're just so freaking awesome when he pops those claws out ah oh, so great look at all that blood um now let's this particular issue right here this is from wolverine 166 so 10 years later in 2001 frank terry wrote Additional stories, flashbacks, we can sequences on Ken Hill, talk pretty one day, during this time of the Weapon X project, and of course, all drawn by the phenomenal Barry Windsor Smith. Now, there was an epilogue there by Larry Hama, but I didn't want to show it because on the opposite side is the final page to 
Marvel Comics Presents, the final issue. And the Marvel Comics Presents, the, the final issue, 84, did not focus on any other characters. There was no spotlight on Captain America or anybody else. All four of these stories are all Weapon X, so it's like a quadruple size Marvel Comics Presents just featuring Weapon X. Now, let's talk about this right here, one of my most favorite issues of Uncanny X-Men, and that is 205, the classic body shop story. So it all starts off with this young lady right here, Yudiko. That's right, Lady Deathstrike comes back. But this time, she is transformed by this character right here, Spiral, who was first introduced in the pages of Longshot, so it's starting to get all connected. Uh, this is partly written by Barry Winter Smith, the colors, oh my gosh. I remember as a kid, I thought this was the greatest piece of work ever. So let's go back to the main story and then I'll show off a little of the artwork towards the middle. But it's not just Lady Deathstrike that is getting transformed. We also have these three characters right here of, um, let's see, Maycomb, Cole, and Reese. These three characters were part of the Hellfire Club during issue 133 when Wolverine went all berserk and started cutting up all the Hellfire Club goons. These three survived and their bodies have been adapted. So eventually these four characters, Spiral, Makeum, Reese, and Cole, will join the Reavers. But that's not until years later. Right now, all four of these are going on the hunt for Wolverine for revenge. Of course, her just wanting the adamantium back. And she herself has adamantium bonded to her cybernetic body now. She has become less human. And I remember what I said about the Weapon X project, how Wolverine is treated like a subject. They have just dehumanized him. That's kind of what she does, but she does it on purpose. Man, I love breaking down these stories. They were so great. Here is Katie from the Power Pack, and it really focuses on her towards the beginning. Uh, she, this is during Christmas time, and she loses track of her babysitter. And who does she run into? Well, she runs into our favorite old knucklehead here, Wolverine. And he is in need of help. He is getting destroyed by these four new characters. Now it's up to Katie and him to try to survive. Oh, damn. What a freaking awesome story in this fight right this is all i will show this fight right here the snow oh man it's so good like to be a kid reading this stuff and there's no offense to issue 204 of course was that the nightcrawler issue or or 206 what came afterwards with the nimrod because nimrod's cool storyline but this right here just stood out that year as some of the best stories and then of course yeah we got the mutant massacre but man this was one of the best standalone issues, and you wanted to know more about Wolverine. And you got it years later. Matter of fact, you got it about five years later in the Marvel Comics Presents. Now, let's look at the extras in the back. We have all the covers to the Marvel Comics Presents. Uh, and they're all what people call virgin covers. Still can't get over that fact. Um, but, yeah, no text, no numbers. You just get the covers. And then I assume, yep, yeah, this one here is... From issue number 84 down at the bottom it tells you what issue comes from when it was released what chapter it was and then who supplied the cover and oh man here's some original artwork this is the stuff that i'd love to own i'm so glad that they did this because this was voted or this is what i was going to put as my number one most wanted gallery edition because it rightly deserves it oh it's so good Here's an unused Weapon X cover by Sam Keith. This is the Life, Death, Marvel Premiere Classic, recoloring issue 205. There really wasn't a need. That's, you know, most of the time I don't mind modern colors. Matter of fact, 95% of the time I'm okay with modern colors. But that one right there, I was like, what? Why would you recolor Barry Windsor Smith's issue 205? Here's some covers to the trades. And it's interesting because these... Trades and hardcovers, I remember when they came out in the 90s. It was almost like Marvel's Watchmen or Year One or Dark Knight Returns. They were available in graphic novel format, in collected editions format, long before many of us knew what those even were. It was a different time then. Some more covers to the trade. Some Barry Windsor Smith for just artwork throughout the years of Uncanny 395, New X-Men 115. Oh yeah, they're... Uh, a Weapon X story arc here by Frank Terry uh, during Deadpool. Of course, all these take on covers. And then the creators. 
Now, something I wanted to do was compare the colors and the finishes to the way that it looked in the Wolverine Omnibus. So it looks like they cleaned up some of the artwork a little bit and the colors are a lot more brighter than they are in the Omnibus edition. So here on the left is the Omnibus and this is of course the Gallery edition. Uh, the colors are a lot darker here in the Omnibus and I never had an issue with that um, because I, it, you know, to me it's still a great reprint of this phenomenal story. But I did want to compare the differences that this is a lot easier to see this bar scene, even though, you know, it's a dark bar, so this looks great. But you can definitely tell a lot more of the details. For example, this leg back here. And I know I've mentioned this on my videos before, especially when comparing books to a Marvel Masterworks, whenever they retouch the artwork up, that it's these kind of differences aren't for everybody. Not everybody's going to notice, right? I always compare it like going from DVD to Blu-ray or Blu-ray to 4K. And most people are like, yeah, whatever. It looks great the way it is. I don't see the differences. Most people are not going to see the differences. It's small little things like that. The cross hatching going on back here is a lot more defined and detailed than in this particular Omnibus edition. The other thing I didn't note when going over this is down here at the bottom, they tell you which chapter you're on at the very bottom. So this is chapter three. So even if you don't see the covers until the very back, because that's the way it's always been collected, you at least know what chapter you're on. And yeah, this one here, you can tell the more defined details on Wolverine's face. It's not as dark, it's not as muddled as the inks here. So those are just some of the differences. Now I'm gonna compare it to the Marvel Masterworks with issue 205. So keep in mind, they are using different kind of paper. This is a thick, glossy paper that they're using for the Marvel Masterworks. And like I mentioned, this is like a hybrid paper between thick matte and glossy for the gallery edition. Uh, the biggest difference to me here is just how much brighter, again, the colors are here compared to the Masterworks. But the amount of detail, like, Holy crap, it looks like they used the Masters from the Marvel Masterworks for the Gallery Edition. Just the amount of detail on back here, for example, Magum, Reese, and Cole. Like, absolutely, it's all there intact. You can even see it a little bit better, of course, because it's bigger. But just comparing a couple of more pages. Yeah, the only difference, and I think it's mainly due to the actual paper, is the, the colors on here. But the lines are defined because they've touched up this particular story. And yeah, it looks like that's what they're using here. And if you're asking yourself why I'm not comparing this to the omnibus version of this story, well, that's because there is no omnibus of this. Maybe one day, but yeah, just a couple more pages. Art looks great in this, just like in the Marvel Masterworks. So I hope this is the master that they use for the Omnibus edition. So the more I flip through here, the more it does feel like matte paper, but it does feel like it has a little slick finish. Like, like I said, like a hybrid between glossy and matte. Now, as far as the binding, you do have sewn binding, uh, 200 pages. You really don't need much of an eye, not that there is one, because the paper is so big, it lays over nice, whether you're in the middle, towards the front, or towards the very back. And that, as they say, is that. If you are interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, and build of this gallery edition. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you enjoy the gallery editions, what other gallery editions you want to see. As for me, I will be making my top 10. I actually have them all down. I just need to go ahead and make that video. This was the Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Check out our Patreon and check out our Spread Shop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you so much to our existing patrons. Could not be making videos like this possible without you all. More importantly, all of you stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.